What's going on? Raven Ritual 666 back from the dead with another Diablo 4 build guide. Today we are introducing my Meteor Storm Sork 2.0 that is optimized for Nightmare Tier 100 dungeons. You can easily kill bosses like Lilith, Duriel, Malthus. Uh, stay tuned for some of the critical updates that makes this build optimal for end game content. Firstly, let's look at a little bit of gameplay and then let's get into the build. Firstly, starting with the skill tree, one of the first changes we have made is we are taking the extra point out of Enhanced Arclash and we are putting it into Firebolt. We will be using Firebolt as an enchantment because we now have the Oculus Wand which frees up our Teleport's place in spot for the Firebolt. So pick up one point in Firebolt, one point in Arclash as we will still be using Arclash as a basic. Next, we're just going to go one point in Devastation, three points in Elemental Dominance just for the 9% extra damage when casting above 50 mana. So, Flame Shield, one point, a second point into Enhanced Flame Shield, and finally into Shimmering Flame for that little bit of extra health regen. We are going to go Teleport all the way through to Shimmering Teleport because that extra bit of damage reduction is very nice, particularly on Tier 100s. One point into Elemental Attunement, just as that lucky hit chance, we get a chance to... Replenish one of our defensive skills, which is very nice. Three points into Glass Cannon for that extra damage. One point into Frost Nova, all the way down to Mystical Frost Nova. As we really want to be applying Vulnerable with Mystical Frost Nova. Along with our Frost Bliss aspect, we're getting two charges of this. Next, three points into Precision Magic to get uh, an increased Lucky Hit Chance. One point into Align the Elements, three points into Mana Shield as we are consuming a lot of mana with Blizzard, and three points into Protection, especially since Meteor um, is a cooldown skill now, thanks to the Starfall Coronet, we are constantly in a barrier, even when applying damage. One of the changes we have made uh, is we are picking up Icy Veil. The increased barrier duration gives us so much life and so much sustainability, particularly in Nightmare 100s. Previously, we were going 1 point into Fiery Surge, 1 point into Endless Pyre, and 3 points into Warmth, as we were applying a lot of burning damage, which was giving us some passive health regen. However, this is not optimal on Nightmare Tier 100. It's just not enough passive health regen, considering the damage that the enemies do at that tier. So you can take those points out and go into Icy Veil. Next, 1 point into Blizzard. We've taken our extra 4 points out, as it's the Ice Spikes that are doing the majority of the damage over to Mage's Blizzard to increase that duration. Five points into Meteor, one into Enhanced Meteor, and one point into Wizard's Meteor, because the Meteor is now applying Immobilize. It means you don't need to waste three points on Crippling Flames. And it's just giving us so much extra damage using our Control Aspect. 
One point into Inner Flames, three points into Devouring Blaze, as this is one of the best passive skills in the Sorcerer's Tree, as it can apply so much extra damage, especially with extra points into it, thanks to our amulet. Next, some of the other changes we've made is two points into Permafrost, three points into Hoarfrost, three points into Icy Touch, and one point into Frigid Breeze. We don't need three points into Frigid Breeze, as it's not helping us to apply that much extra mana, plus with the lucky hit chance to return mana on both our gloves and our focus, we don't need the extra two points, which can be better off utilized in defensive skills like barriers. Now, in the last video, I did say it was an avalanche build, but we were going to test Isu's Ferocity. So Isu's Ferocity is still bugged. Um, it is still applying to the Ice Spikes. So you want to be running Isu's Ferocity as it is a huge, huge buff to our damage um, for both the Ice Spikes from Blizzard and for our Meteor. Now, into the build and into our skills and some of the changes we've made, we are still running the Starfall Coronet. Um, the rolls are fantastic. Um, some of the things you want to prioritize is for the aspect, you need to have at least a seven second cooldown. Otherwise, the, the wait time on spawning your Meteors is too low. Uh, you want the four ranks into Meteor. You want the cooldown reduction, lucky hit chance, and max life as high as possible. But I would be prioritizing your ranks of Meteor and your cooldown reduction um, as your priority stats. Next, for the chess piece, I have tested a fair bit of running Raiment. Now, Raymond is very good for those lower levels as you're getting a lot of extra damage. But for Nightmare Tier 100s, you really need that armor, which is going to help you to reach armor cap, that max life, damage reduction, and damage reduction from burning enemies. As you can see, we're at our armor cap now of over 13.3k. Uh, so, total armor is probably the most important thing you can have. Um, I'm running damage reduction, damage reduction from burning, but you could run damage reduction from close, damage reduction from distant, depending on what you get on your other gear slots. Now, Frost Blitz is very important. An extra charge of Frost Nova is working very nice with our skills because we're applying extra damage to chilled and to frozen enemies. So the more we can keep them frozen by using these cooldowns, the more barriers we get, the more damage we get. So into our gloves, we are running Control. Yes, this is a Control build. Uh, attack speed is very important, especially with your blizzards and your meteors. Crit chance is super important. Lucky hit uh, chance to restore your primary resource is fantastic. It's a great way of getting mana back. Crit strike chance against injured enemies isn't perfect. Uh, it, it's okay against bosses, but ideally you'd want lucky hit chance there uh, for best in slot. Now over to our pants, I've changed from disobedience to juggernauts. Initially, I was running Teleport as an enchantment, and when you have Juggernauts, it is really bad because you, you might have four charges with your boots. However, Juggernauts really increases that cooldown, which is horrible. So one of the changes we are making to counteract that is we now have the Oculus. Yes, it gives us a free Teleport enchantment, which means now we can run Meteor as an enchantment, we can run Firebolt, so we're applying extra burning dots, which is helping for our DR and for our damage through our Paragon. And we gain the effect of Teleport Enchantment for free, which is absolutely insane. And with the Oculus, your attacks reduce your Vade's cooldown by 0.9 seconds. That's a min roll on that, and we're still getting more Teleport Charges back on our dodges than what we're using. So now we can run Juggernauts, and to not lose that cooldown of our Teleport Enchant on our dodge. For the boots, uh, for the, the points, so you want to prioritize four ranks of Meteor, you want to prioritize your maximum life, and then two DR rolls. So DR to close, DR while injured, whatever you don't have on your chest piece, put that in slot on your pants. You can swap them around and vice versa, but ideally you want at least one DR roll for each DR type. For the boots, now this is something we do swap to. Like for speed clearing, we do swap out and we run Isus with prioritizing maximum movement speeds, uh, crit damage, and mana cost reduction. That is super important and is going to be our boots we are using for the gauntlet. Otherwise, for tier 100s, where enemies are a little stronger, we do want to run extra ranks into Flame Shield and extra ranks into Frost Nova. It helps us get those cooldowns back even quicker. Um, but also we are using Audacity. Now, when you enter a fight, 
every 20 seconds, that whole mob is instantly stunned. Uh, we are applying stuns still through the electrocution support on our Seneschal Construct, which is helping us have that control aspect up and that extra flat 35% damage up almost all the time, which is absolutely amazing. So next you want movement speed and all stats. That's just going to help us through our, our Paragon board. If you don't have all stats, you could run intelligence, but movement speed is definitely a priority. Uh, if you have enough stats already, you probably could drop all stats and go DR from injured, but I think all stats is fine. So we are using the Oculus because this piece of gear makes all the difference. Now with these boots, we have seven charges of teleport. Like, look how much we can teleport in such a quick period of time. And when we do damage, they just come back almost instantly. So it is absolutely amazing. So the Oculus is the piece of gear we definitely want to be running as we get so much barrier. And it's just amazing to teleport around. For bosses, we will swap to a dagger and run the conceited aspect. Uh, if you don't want to run this build with control you don't have to you could put the conceited aspect on your gloves to have that up yeah, all the time and you could run storm swell on your dagger if you don't have the oculus that would still be an amazing form of damage with this build um, and for our bossing we will swap to a green gem just so we get that crit strike damage against vulnerable enemies as bosses will die before they get crowd controlled for general mobbing I'll run uh, the gems for crit strike damage to crowd controlled enemies as we get that more consistently. For the neck piece, what we've changed from the last build is we have put glacial onto our amulet and swapped control over to our gloves. It just increases the damage from the ice bikes dramatically. It is very important. Nothing too dissimilar to most sort builds on our rings. We're running tower rushes for the extra damage for a different elemental types and x falls for that huge damage buff from what an x fall proxy you'll see it hit for upwards of 3 million which is huge on our focus uh we'll be running crit chance chance to restore primary resource as it's really good for our mana regen mana cost reduction and cooldown reduction uh that is what i believe is best in slot so over to our seneschal construct we are using flash of adrenaline genesis duration support tactical support just as we get that you know nearly 50 percent damage bonus up all the time we have swapped uh, over to tempest we are still using electrocution support the reason being is our seneschal construct is applying so many stuns when combined with arcing support so we get that damage from control uh, up so much of the time Finally, we are running Breaking Support as it's applying an extra form of Vulnerable as the only Vulnerable we have is off of our two charges of Frost Nova. So that is very nice to have to increase your damage. If you are having mana regen problems you and you would want wanted to run Conceited instead of Control, you could swap out Electrocution Support and what you could be running instead is resource support and that would help you to cast more blizzards more consistently so that is one option for you when it comes to this build so lastly let's look at our paragon board uh there's not too much change from the original build guide and there's one thing i do want to talk through the reason why we are running adept so firstly we want to go all the way up we want to use elementus for extra damage we're going to go uh over across use control we are going to increase our crit strike damage with destruction, pick up our legendary node Searing Heat, which is huge, as we get 23% extra damage. We are going to increase our vulnerable damage, which is why we're using breaking support on our Seneschal Construct by using Exploit. Now, finally, we go into Enchantment Master, and this one has had some controversy, and it's taken me a lot of testing. I am running Adept. Now, for a straight Blizzard build where you're doing your Ice Spikes, Adept can be bad. The reason being, it increases the area that your Blizzard spawns, which means your Ice Spikes won't hit as many targets because it's scattered out. Now, that's fine for bosses, but for smaller enemies, it is not as good. But, this is giving a huge damage buff to our Meteor, and because now we've taken off some of our aspects that... Uh, increase the amount of meteors that fall they're too small we want them large so we're playing more immobilized to a bigger mob which in turn is giving us more damage from devouring blaze and more damage from 
from our uh, control aspect. So if we look here at the damage, and then we swap to ice bikes, you will see the difference that happens. Ready? We pass our blizzard. You want to get your meteors down, and you'll just see we're hitting for huge amounts of damage here. Over two million on that proc. We're going to use Inferno, just the two points. It, it's great at pulling in enemies, but we are getting just massive amounts of damage. We've got heaps of mana regen. It is just absolutely phenomenal how much damage this puts out. Ready? Now, if I swap that over and out to, let's say, Stalagmite, which will decrease the size of our blizzards, yes, Ice Spikes will be proccing more, but the damage is just significantly lower at 1.3 mil. We're not getting as huge buffs. Now, once you are out of mana and you've used all your cooldowns, that is when I chuck in a couple of cheeky little arc lashes, just to get a little bit more extra damage. So, ideally, Adept is still better with this overall build than running Ice Spikes in your Paragon board. All right, well, thank you so much for your support on this another amazing build guide. The full build guide will be in the description below. Um, please feel free to give me a like and subscribe to the channel for more Diablo 4 content into the future. Um, I am live on Twitch from Thursdays to Saturdays. Uh, if you want to ask me any questions around the build, feel free to come and join the Discord. However, uh, stay tuned for more content and stay tuned for a little bit of build play. And let's watch some Nightmare Tier 100 plays, some boss kills. And this is going to be amazing for the Gauntlet. Um, I will be making a couple changes. I have some extra chess pieces here that I will be testing out for speedrunning Nightmare Tier 70s, ready for the Gauntlet. But yes, this is the build, the final Meteor Storm Sword 2.0. It is so much fun. It does so, so much damage. Stay tuned for some gameplay.